today's video, how to climb like a doper. How to climb like a doper. I'm a bit too small for climbing, but uh, so how to climb like a doper. This is a serious video. I'm always, you know, I'm always, I was always obsessed by climbing. I remember back in 1986, you know, riding BMXs with the mates in Perth, you know, stealing my brother's BMX in the early morning because his, his uh, red line BMX was lighter than my BMX and I'm just riding up these hills and just, wow, it's a nice light bike. So light, riding light bikes is something I've been going on since the 80s, you know, uh, mid 80s. And then, you know, buying a road bike and then going, wow, you know, going up all these climbs and every ticking off the climbs, you know, my friends, my non-cyclist friends would say, oh, can you do this hill? Can you do that hill? And I'm like, oh, I'll just go find out. And so I do the hill. And they're like, oh, wow, you rode up Mount Lofty or you rode up Wollonga Hill or you rode up Flagstaff Hill or all these hills. Just getting up them was a challenge for me back then. And now they're just, you know, they're no, no worries. Understanding cadence and carbohydrate intake and water and pacing and power and all that sort of stuff, pacing, drafting. All those things make a huge difference in the climb. But uh, so how to how to climb like a doper? You know how how are we pushing like this? You know the seven watts per kilo, the six watts per kilo for these long climbs, stuff like that. You know like the the you know, the high watts per kilo. And this is always a question of like um, you know how do you tell if someone is doping? And it's pretty fucking easy. It's just the watts per kilo. Right? There's things you can do naturally, and there's things you can't do naturally. So you can, same with, same with running. If you can't run a two hundred one marathon. Natty, it's just not possible, and <laughs> it's just downhill. Yeah, so there's, it's just how it is, and, and I've got no, you know, I'm not going to get like a, a clean tattoo on my bicep here and start shooting up PPO and start doing crazy times on Strava like some people might do. You know, I've got no issue with people, you know, taking EPO or whatever. I've never taken it myself. I've had friends who've taken it, and I've been, you know, in races with guys on EPO, and I've seen, and I've even been up Norton Summit with people on EPO, um, you know, at the start of the climb. You probably see it on YouTube. You know, like you probably see it on YouTube, like that, that, that's, in my opinion, that is EPO. 455 watts up Norton Summit, 66 kilos, mad skinny. For me, in my opinion, that is EPO. For me, in my opinion, 100%. And because uh, how, how otherwise? And let's say that person was clean. Let's say Cookie Man was as clean as his tattoo claims. Let's just say, this is all hypothetical. This is all hypothetical. Um, then he'd be doing like 500 watts up Norton Summit at 66 kilos, you know, which is like fucking even more bullshit than 455. So that's how it is. And it's, and again, if people want to do stuff, you know, that's no, you know, I would do EPO uh, if I had, let's say I had, uh, you know, let's say I had people who knew how to take it. Let's say I was friends like, let's say I was friends with Tom Danielson or Lance Armstrong or Tyler Hamilton or Christian Van, all these other people from the US Postal Crew or, or, you know, just some people in the know, you know, what to take. Because it can be quite dangerous if you take too much. So, or if your hemoglobin gets too high. My hemoglobin is already pretty high anyway, you know, with the B12 injections and stuff like that. So, would I take it? Yeah, I would definitely take it as a, a YouTube experiment for sure. And I think it would be pretty fun, you know. But I would want to do it under some, you know, pretty strict supervision. And also, I'd want to do some training for it as well. If you're taking EPO... You know, and you can only run at Norton Summit in 13 minutes, then it's pretty fucking pointless. You want to get down to like, you know, low 12s and then you know, do something like that. Otherwise, it's sort of like, it's a bit of a waste. It's a bit like the fat guy who goes in the shop, the barrister, the fat barrister who goes into the bike shop and buys a set of lightweight wheels. And it's like, well, you know, you could probably lose 30 kilos, bro. <laughs> you could lose 10 kilos. Like, why would you buy that? I mean, hey, you can buy whatever you want. You can shoot up whatever you want in your veins. I'm just saying it's a bit of a waste if you're, you know. So, so I've never been at the point where I'm like, yeah, I, I would do EPO now because I've never really, I've never really felt like I've been at my natural peak yet. So you'd want to get to your natural limit, in my opinion, and then get on the, uh, you know, on the magic cookie program. Otherwise, in my opinion, it, it would be a waste of drugs. It's like, it's like using coffee when you can just get some more sleep. Like, what's the point? You know, just go to bed a bit earlier. You know, why? You go, go, go and have a nap. Go and have a nap. You know, refresh yourself. It, uh, that's just logic for me. So I'm definitely uh, not opposed to it. Um, I would definitely do it under some supervision. And I think it would be, you know, I, I would be very, very curious as well. But I'd have to do at least two or three months of proper training to get a decent level of fitness and then go from there. But I never, I never have used it. And I'm pretty open about things I've used, you know. I've never used that. And for me, EPO is the, that is the KOM drug. You know, that is the mountain drug. That is the, the marathon drug. 
EPO. Testosterone pff, doesn't do shit really, unless you've got low T levels. And even then, that's just got probably, probably be gonna happen because you've overtrained or whatever. But testosterone doesn't do shit. I mean, I've used it. It puts on muscle and it kills your climbing times, really. It puts on extra weight. So you basically, you go from a six kilo bike to a 10 or 11 kilo bike because you put on five kilos very, very quickly when it comes to testosterone. So for me, it's pretty pointless. And another example of how testosterone doesn't help the marathon or cycling, in my opinion, climbing, is because look at how fast some girls climb up hills, you know? And, and look, at, look at how, look, look at even Natasha, you know, she can smash up hills for under five minutes, really, really fucking fast, or one minute even as well, and put me in the hurt box. You know, her testosterone is fucking almost zero for a, a skinny 21 year old female. Or you look at some of these girls who do this epic shit on the, on the bikes, or in, mar in marathons, like Paula Radcliffe, you know, Paula Radcliffe 215 marathon, her testosterone would have been super, super low. So EPO, red blood cells, yeah, oh, super, super high. So testosterone is definitely CrossFit, sprinting, yeah, sprinting for sure. Um, I would say it'd help if you're a, uh, if you're a road sprinter. Yeah, like a, definitely like a Cavendish or a Q-Tool or something like that definitely would help. Testosterone would help because you have, have to have that max power. But for running three minute K pace, that's all about red blood cells, all about blood cells. Um, so how to climb like a doper, it is, you you just got to pretend you're doping. you got to pretend you're an EPO. And you're going to have, you know, I, I see these people, I, I've ridden with these people, and I, I like, you can watch them on TV, watch them on YouTube, and you can tell there's this pedaling style. EPO gives you this pedaling style. It's, you know, I see it now. <clears throat> I've seen it in my friends. I've seen it in people I've raced with. I've seen it in people on Strava or YouTube or whatever, you know. You, just, you see it, there's this like technique you get when you're an EPO, you know, and it goes and it correlates with these insane watts. I should, I should say it's insane, the technique you're pushing at the insane watts, you know, that's the giveaway there. Because you might have a really good technique for maybe 20 years of riding and you're only doing 250, 300 watts and you're on your limit. But yeah, then you got this, this efficiency when you're doing like this you know, 450 watts or seven watts per kilo or whatever, then that, how your legs tick over with that, then that's, for me, that's a very clear sign. So what we're looking for, we're looking for a smooth pedal stroke. We're looking for a pretty relaxed upper body. We're looking for pressure just in the pedals. The head's very light. You see people in EPO, there's not really much going on in the face. There's no real strain. It's like, it's in general, it's very, the face is very, very calm. The head's very calm. All the pressure is in the pedals. Right? So that's what you want to do. I'll see it with, even well, went for Natasha before. And I was on the e-bike. I was on an e-bike just testing out this e-bike I got given. And uh, so it was very, very easy for me. And so I could just put all my focus on Natasha, looking at her physiology, and I could just feel the pressure in her feet or versus the pressure in her head. And when she was going really hard, the pressure was all on the feet. And when she was starting to you know, have the self-criticism or the self-doubt, which everybody gets, I get, you get, everybody gets, then you can just sort of feel that the energy is going on in the head there. And it's probably sounds a little bit woo-woo for a lot of people out there, but the more experienced cyclist you are, or runner even, the more you'll feel someone's energy. Like if you're a fighter, or maybe you do give people massage or, or whatever, you know, or you're dealing with certain animals. Like my cats, I can feel my energy from my cats. What's going on there? So that's a you know, little, little thing. So you want to have that self-awareness and go, where is my energy? Where's, where's my pressure now? Is my pressure in my head? And am I, am I thinking about this? Am I thinking about that? Am I just like, eh, just, you know, you only want to have two things to focus on when you're going hardcore on a bike or even running is your feet put the pressure in the feet put the pressure in the feet and in your eyes as well not pressure but just awareness so you're not crashing into people you're aware of what's going on behind you a bit you can maybe have a little mirror on your handlebars a cat ibm 45 and you have that total awareness you know and that's for safety that's for safety and performance as well because you can see who's coming up behind you tactically i mean so i've seen so many races where someone sneaks up behind boom it hits and attacks them in not a physical attack but like a, a bicycle race or attack yeah so that's and then they get a huge gap on someone if you've got a little mirror and you're checking that mirror every now and then you can see if anyone's going to sneak up on you and try and poof, bolt past you and you know start play the cat and mouse game to the finish line so it's huge advantage having a little mirror on your bike huge advantage huge advantage <laughs> huge advantage <laughs> huge advantage on it. and i'm pretty sure they're not legal but having a mirror on your bike is definitely one of the biggest performance enhancing things out there it's huge. It's, it's a, such a tactical advantage. Probably the biggest tactical advantage because you've got eyes in the back of your head. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. No one can sneak up on you. 
So that's just a wrap up there. It's, uh, you know, having that psychology, and that's what, you know, when, you, when you're on EPO, the reason why it's so popular, the reason why it's so devastatingly effective is it raises the hemoglobin in your body, and the hemoglobin is your oxygen. So basically, you, see, you ever seen these people out there, the noobs out there, they ride everywhere with their mouth shut, like trying to look cool? You know? <sighs> Can't even breathe. You know what I mean? So you always gonna be breathing through your mouth. So you, that, that's, that's what EPO basically does, is it gives you a third mouth on your throat. So it gives you a third mouth in your throat, so you can get even more oxygen in to your blood cells. Your blood cells can carry more oxygen to your muscles and your lactate level just goes, you just you have a lot higher ceiling there before you blow up. The lactic acid and stuff like that. So it's, it's just, it's like a game changer. So basically EPO performance is have the mouth open and EPO gives you a third mouth just like you have you know, two mouths most people just have one mouth their nose noobs especially like they're running along i'm not trying don't think i'm trying i don't, don't want to look like i'm trying don't judge me you know that sort of thing and you got people don't give a fuck and they're like yep you know fat is fat leaves the body via the mouth so i'm just amazed about people out there who train with their mouth shut and they want to lose body fat but they train with their mouth shut it's like that's crazy Schnitzel's coming over here, schnitzel. So yeah, you always want to have an open mouth when you're training, you know, unless, you, unless, you got, unless your body fat's too low. And in that case, you want to just uh, keep your mouth shut. Schnitzel, your mouth open or shut? Oh, schnitzy. So schnitzel, the rescue cat. And that's another one. So yeah, our open mouth. Open mouth, relax, breathing from the belly, breathing from the belly, not from the chest, breathing from your diaphragm. To learn that, just lay on the ground and have your belly go in and out your hands in your stomach you want to have your belly like a balloon basically you want to have a fat gut up the hill belly going in and out you want to feel that it's all in the gut that's the diaphragm that's all about the oxygen all right so again there's people out there who use epo some people out there you know i've seen it i've seen amateurs out there in epo in c grade d grade or whatever and it's like yeah, they don't even know how to breathe properly it's like why would you do that it's like having a pair of lightweights and running shit tires on there <laughs> like with 20 psi it's like why why would you do that do your homework first. Uh, so things like that. So the EPO works incredibly. And another thing with EPO is it doesn't increase your weight, you know, except maybe a couple of hundred mils of blood. So that's, that's why you can be super, that's what people are like, how are these people with such skinny legs producing insane watts per kilo? And it's, it's EPO, because they've they got like blood, a lot, a lot of blood in their body. And so that's just why you can be mad, mad skinny, have legs like that, and be producing these you know, mutant watts per kilo up the climbs. So there you go, that's the deal there. So how come like a doper without doing the, the EPO? Yeah. Open mouth, no pressure in the head, no self-judgment, total freedom, just let it go. Let it go on the climbs, let it go on the time trials, just let it go and have all that pressure in your pedals. Have your cadence around 80 to 100, 90 is a good sweet spot. And just be just dancing like Lance, smashing like Cookie Man, floating like Tom, Tommy D, you know. It's just cruising up there like Contador, you know, all the all the hitters out there. So seven watt per kilo club. And that's, you know, obviously you, you won't become a seven watts per kilo person unless you take EPO, but you can emulate their psychology and their physiology and, you know, do your four watts per kilo, your five, or maybe even if you're really good, six watts per kilo for 10 minutes. You know, you'd be able to do those things. But once you hit that seven watts per kilo, 10 minutes, then, you know, you know, uh, I've got some, some fake netty, Stuff going on there, which is totally fine, but don't be don't be fooled. All right, it's not about the bike, you know. It's not about the bike. <laughs> it doesn't matter if your bike comes from Alibaba, or or Trek, or whatever, or Nike. What matters is your blood volume, and your mental thoughts, your cadence, your hydration intake, and your carbohydrate intake. That's all that matters. That blood volume. That's all that matters, man. So how to climb like a doper? Boom. Simple as that. If you want more tips, get a copy of my book. Doing on his lean body bible there's hundreds of tips in there hundreds of tips in there and the main reason i've been able to coach people over the years to go from total noob level to like your know, national level in about a year maybe a year and a half many people out there is just these basic tips man these are basic tips and you know so many people will get on the bike and they just they just judge themselves they're so scared of failure they're so scared of people's opinion oh, i don't want to get on strava i don't want to upload strava i don't want to do a pr i don't want to push too hard because i'm I'm scared of people's opinion. Don't give a fuck about that, man. If you're top of the leaderboard, if you're the KOM, great. 
If you're not, if you're two thousandths, great. It's better to go out there and flog yourself, get a good workout. And if you're at number one or number hundred, two thousandths, two hundred thousandths, it doesn't matter. So as long as you went out there, gave your best, yeah, and, and get it going, man. Get, get, get your bum on a bike and get out there and have a crack. That's all that matters. Yeah, don't worry about people's opinion, man. Don't worry about people's opinion. Because if you worry about that, then you'll be a you'll be a prisoner. People a prisoner of people's opinion and a prisoner of your own opinion for life. Just let it go on the climb. Go for it. Just be like a wild cat, wild seagull, a wild falcon. See you on the road.